Hi, I'm Michael Clark and welcome to the road trip from beautiful Alberta. And I have to admit, we're having a bail of a time. I'm sorry, I just had to say it, but you know, it's pretty hard to ignore the type of hauling that we've been doing with the HD editions of the Silverado as well as the Sierra for 2015. Now there's a lot about these trucks that is carried over, but there's also going to be a lot of things that you simply aren't going to be expecting. Like for example, the interiors that we first saw on the light duty trucks for Silverado as well as Sierra. Now the interesting thing too is that the highfalutin editions are also going to be making their debuts for 2015. And that includes the GMC Sierra Denali as well as the high country edition of the Chevrolet Silverado. There's definitely a lot of heavier things that we're going to be moving around with these particular HD trucks and trying to determine if having that capability means that you're going to lose things like comfort and general driving enjoyment. Now, if you've got thoughts, feelings, or questions about anything on the HD side, you can send an email to steelbeltedmind at gmail.com. Now, there's also going to be a special highlight for our long-term tester Silverado. That's the 2014 version in the 1500 edition, but this one has the 5.3 liter V8. Now, as you know, with the new light duty engines, there's actually active fuel management. Now, what that means is that these engines can actually knock down from their displacement, whether it be six cylinder, eight cylinder, down to four cylinders. Now, General Motors is being pretty quick to tell people that they are going to experience the best fuel economy with these types of engines, especially with the V8 as they go up against the competing big engine. And that, of course, would be the Ford EcoBoost. So I wanted to find out what it really gets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take along my cameraman, Brian Park, and he's also a consummate car guy, and we're going to compete. We're going to see exactly which one of us can get the best possible fuel mileage on that Silverado tester. And we'll be reporting to you later on in the program. So, once again, it's time for the road trip, so buckle up. Much of what we've seen on the GMC light duty pickups appears in some way, shape or form on the HD units. Now you'll notice on the side of the vehicle that you actually have the surrounds around the fender, much like the light duty, but you also have the daytime running lamp surrounds the LED versions, of course, so that signature look that you've seen on a light duty appears here. As you can see, projector style headlamps. Now, the other thing is that they've gone with new hood designs for the trucks and this power dome needs to have something to show off. And well, what better, especially if you opt for the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax, than to show it off in thick chrome letters. Now let's talk a little bit about the configurations that you can actually get the HD trucks in. Now both Chevrolet and GMC will give you regular cab as well as the new double cab style which replaces the extended cab, has the forward hinging doors that we've seen on things like the Ram products, and there's the availability of the crew cab. Now the box sizes, simply because of the type of vehicles that we're dealing with here, are six and a half feet and eight feet. Now the 3500 series can actually be had in both single and dual wheels, but uh, you know I have to tell you if there's one thing that I think looks really slick, it's up top on the roof. Because as expected with trucks of this size, you do need the federally mandated clearance lights. So on something like a dually, that's going to happen automatically. But you know what? I think they kick up the rest of the trucks and may want to consider that on the option list. Now there's a lot of people who need the robust HD chassis, but not everybody needs 765 foot-pounds of torque out of that Duramax diesel. So you could consider a truck like this. Now how do we know it's a truck like this? Well, very simply because you don't have the Duramax chrome lettering on the hood, that means that we've got the 6 liter gas version here. Now what General Motors will do is that if you specify this engine and you want to get it upfit to the compressed natural gas capability, they take care of all of that for you. Now it is done by an outside party, but as opposed to you having to go and take care of this, 
General Motors takes care of all the paperwork. Everything happens very seamlessly. So if you're thinking about using this type of technology for fleet and considering how inexpensive the CNG solution can be when compared to where diesel prices are at, this might be the engine you need for your needs. Now the one thing that you'll notice on the new HD trucks for both Chevrolet and GMC is that the grill work has been reworked. You'll notice up front that they've actually gone with a one-piece chrome bumper. Now I have to admit I've got some concerns about that, especially when it comes to the type of work that these trucks do. Because as we've seen with other different designs, they've actually gone to bumper designs that have pieces that can be replaced because we know these trucks do hard work. Now the other thing that you should know about this grill is it's not just about looking pretty. There's actually been improvements made to the air charge that comes into the engine. Now the whole idea is to keep it cooler as opposed to sucking in all the hot air around the engine. So that's definitely going to help with efficiency. And you'll also notice the new style of projector halogen headlamps. <laughs> The HD versions for Chevrolet and GMC use fully boxed steel frames, and there's extensive use of high strength steel in those frames as well as the cab structures. Independent front suspension is also used for improved ride and allows for easier trim height adjustments, say if you're using a snowplow. In the rear, asymmetrical rear leaf springs are used for enhanced traction and long-term durability. There's best-in-class payload of 7,374 pounds. For conventional towing, the HD versions can tow up to 19,600 pounds with the factory hitch. If you choose to go the fifth wheel route, up to 23,200 pounds of trailer can be behind you. These side steps are really slick and nowhere near as slippery as the ones on a Ford F-150. Now if you want the highfalutin, the good news is, is that the HD trucks can now be had with the Denali trim for GMC. And that means everything that you've liked on the light duty trucks is going to appear here. Now everything from scripting to overhead entertainment units, all of the expected trim that makes a Denali a Denali is here. And to be quite honest, when it came to the last generation trucks, we found that to be somewhat wanting. Well, there's the signature grill up front, nothing says Denali more than that. But you also have to remember that the High Country edition of the Silverado is also going to be available. We didn't have one on hand, but everything we've seen lines up with what we already know about the Silverado light duty versions for High Country. So if you need to have the highfalutin, you can definitely get it whether the badge is GMC or Chevrolet. Now, the HD segment in Canada represents about 20% of all full-size pickups sold in Canada today. That's about 62,000 units at the end of 2013. So it's a very important segment for General Motors to be participating in and to bring forward our best of the best. Today at the Bar U Ranch, the media will have an opportunity to go head-to-head -head with some of the segment's best with our one-ton full-size heavy-duty pickup trucks that are diesel powered by our Duramax 6.6 .6 liter engine paired with the Allison 1000 transmission. So a great powerful combination where in the Canadian marketplace diesels are representing about 60% of the market where from a GM perspective we're looking roughly at about 70% doing a little bit better than the segment average. So we're definitely excited to put these vehicles to the test and truly show what they've, what they've got to compete with. We're really pleased to uh, still be offering and carry on offering the uh, Duramax diesel combined with the Allison transmission. The amount of torque that it is able to put to the road at 765 foot-pounds is not only a phenomenal amount of torque, it's how it executes it to the road as well that our customers uh, keep coming back to utilize that powertrain. Uh, adding the aerodynamics to the vehicle, adding uh, you know, a little more chrome, more differentiation to the uh, two different 
brand offerings uh, has really started to separate it above the pack. The aerodynamics itself we look at as adding additional fuel economy. Uh, it also is able to lower sound uh, within the vehicle. Furthermore, as we get into the doors and into the, the, uh, the openings, we have added in additional ceiling as well as the doors are inlaid. The, when you get inside this cabin, it is, it is extremely quiet. The body to the chassis is separated with hydraulic uh, connectors and therefore, again, it isolates vibration and it makes the vehicle quieter. Uh, you sit in the cabin, it will be like being in an office. There will be very little noise. And that's really what our, our customer is after. Our customers in the commercial business, they live in these vehicles. Well, you know, we introduced the, uh, the heavy-duty trucks in the U.S. in end of uh, January, and they're doing very well, both Chevrolet and GMC. And HDs are running about 25% of the pickup market in the U.S., which I think is comparable to Canada. And the users are very similar to uh, what you see in Canada. A lot of them are used for business, uh, for commercial use, for small business, energy, agriculture, construction are the three biggest sectors. And then a lot of people use them for towing, for recreational purposes, horse trailers, car haulers, and whatnot. So those are really the two biggest areas, which again, I think are, are fairly similar in most markets. Um, what we've seen with the, uh, the new trucks is people are really responding well to how quiet the trucks are, how comfortable they are, how confident they are when you're doing towing. Um, you know, whether you're using them for work or for recreation, you're probably spending long hours in the truck. And so when we did this generation of truck, we really wanted to focus on the quiet, the comfort, and the confidence of the truck. Um, I sometimes use the analogy, you know, any power drill will drill a hole in a piece of wood. But if you're going to be drilling holes in a piece of wood all day, you want a really well-designed, well-engineered drill, one that's going to feel good in your hand, is going to get the job done, is not going to leave you with your hand hurting at the end of the day. I think trucks are a lot the same. You want the quiet makes a big difference when you're driving for eight or ten hours. The integration of the diesel exhaust brake and the power trade grade braking help a lot when you're towing trailers in hilly terrain. Um, it helps you keep ahead of the trailer. You don't feel like the trailer's driving the truck. So just a lot of focus on that. And again, I think that's paid off for customers in, in all of the markets for these trucks. HD trucks. Nobody buys one to go to the corner store to get milk. 80% of these trucks haul, and they haul regularly. Uh, when somebody goes into a dealership, the information they need to be armed with is, what job do you want the truck to do? What trailer are you hauling, the length, the weight? and characteristics that you expect. Are you going to be going short haul, are you just in town, or are you doing long distance driving across the country? Based on all those answers, that's how you're going to spec out the truck that you want. And as far as these trucks that we're looking at right now, um, basically they were all, all, new, all new in 2011. So the mechanicals are pretty much the same, with the exception of some really cool electronic upgrades, particularly the hill descent control, uh, the cruise control uh, setup, and uh, of course more engine options. But uh, the big deal this year is that the interiors have finally caught up really to the rest of the truck. Powertrain was good, training was good, the interiors sucked rocks. But now it's picked up the new, tra pardon me, the new interior that uh, came out last year in the half tons. It's migrated here, good to go. Well, welcome to the dashboard, and we're winding things down here with the 2015 Chevrolet Silverado HD as well as the GMC version in the Sierra HD. Now, as is the tradition of the dashboard, it's time to introduce you to my driving partner, and that would be Mark Stevenson from Auto123. Mark, good to see you. Thanks. Um, yep. It's been great. Oh, it's been a great drive, <laughs> and uh, a lot of one-liners, which is certainly not safe for publication, but uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we've experienced today, and I think the most important thing from my perspective is how the fact that these trucks are heavy duty, we pulled a lot of crazy stuff with these things, and I actually don't feel like I've been treated like a punching bag all day long. No, there it's almost like a little heavy duty Luxo liner, or Luxo, Lux, 
Luxural L- liner? L- Luxural liner? Lux- 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 Luxurial Luxo- liner. Luxo, Luxo liner. Luxo liner. Um, okay. Yeah. It's getting to the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a great drive. Uh, we're in the gas one now, which has actually been really good as well. Yes. Um, but we've driven both the gas and the diesel. Most of them were diesel. Right. Um, and they've been incredibly quiet, incredibly comfortable. Uh, and we even got to compare this to the Super Duty and the Ram with the Cummins. And this is by far, you know, this is definitely been the most comfortable of the three. Well, I've been really surprised with how well that Duramax does and with the foundation. And I think it's kind of that old story of, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because the underguts here, I mean, they date back to 2011. Yeah. And even the gas engine and the one that we're in now isn't the new 6.2 Ecotec 3 engine. It's still the 6 liter Vortec unit that uh, they used to use so and it's been delivering great power um, and even the steering column a lot of the componentry of, of the the new HD trucks is uh, it, it's a lot of carryover well well that and I mean the one thing that I've noticed too here is I mean there's been so much carried over too from the light duty trucks the 1500 series uh, everything that well how do I put this nicely now it actually has an interior yeah yeah and it's actually very well appointed in here, especially the switch gear down below. I know you guys can't see it, but uh, there's no blanks. There's no blanks on the switch gear. So instead of having uh, maybe a blank button where something could go, you have a bigger button uh, for wow. something that actually does something, you know. Uh, so in, in this one, we have. Uh, I know you guys can't see it, but I'll they show make you later. yeah. I'll show you later. They, they make uh, double wide uh, switches so that you don't have the single blank options that you'll never ever see. Well, I, I think when you tie it all together, plus the fact that you can get in so many different cab configurations, so many different box configurations, and, and basically equip this thing up to the point where you're you're pretty much glamping if you want to. So, I I think. Now, now, when you start looking at the MSRPs, though, I mean, people need to understand that if you want to get into HD and, like, really love it, you mm-hmm. got to have some cake. Yeah, like, in this model, I think is it starts over 60, uh, and the one, or actually, it starts over 40, sorry, uh, and this one is 60. I got the paper right here. Yeah, it's yeah, right there. The right there. Um, but even some of the uh, top trim Denali models are over $85,000. It's crazy. See, see if I can show it to them. Oh, I got it right side up. Okay. Can you see all that? Okay. It's right there. It's right there. That's what we're talking. And uh, that's for the gas. So $61,275. Standard vehicle price $48,945. And I know for a fact that some of the Denali's we were driving with that 6.6 Duramax, yeah. that's almost punching 90 grand. Yeah. Yeah. And well, if you, if you had tax and freight and all that in it, you're probably touching close to 100 okay but here's the thing that's 90 grand for a truck that is the pinnacle of course for GMC mm-hmm. I mean Denali is is back and in a big way but the other thing that you've got too is you've got an interior and a comfort level that really does turn it into an office it does and uh, I know that no you, they can because uh, here yeah you here, can see here, this here's what I'll do I'll, I'll, I'll just dip the camera down see yeah. Here, here, so in this one, I do, it, it does kind of almost have a file folder thing in here. Uh, I know this isn't deep on the gas version, but in the GMCs, you can actually put file folders in the center console. Yeah. So it does make it an office. Wow, it's amazing how I can, you know, actually move the camera. Well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Hey, <laughs> check that there out. Go. Okay, so uh, final thoughts, final four-wheel thoughts. I mean, if it comes down to what you're looking at and especially what you experienced today mm-hmm. in the back-to-back comparisons, do you really think that the HD editions for GM are going to really resonate with the HD set? I think if you're looking for power, this is the way to go, uh, at least for now. They're always back and forth at who's best this year, who's best next year. Um, the Ram with the Cummins six-cylinder, you know, that's going to be your value buy if you want to get into HD. Uh, and the Ford guys, they're just kind of waiting for something new. I think that they did get a new frame last year, but uh, the interiors are really lacking. So if you want something that's cutting edge in the HD segment, this is the buy. Great. Well, that's our thoughts on the HD set from Chevrolet as well as GMC. And for the road trip, I'm Michael Clark. And I'm Mark Stevenson. Keep the shiny side up. And just give her bye. 
I, I, I don't speak Nova Scotian. Not my problem. Half of Alberta does. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the dashboard of the 2014 Chevrolet Silverado LT Crew Cab Z71. All sorts of wonderful things going on in here. I'm Michael Clark. I'm Brian Park. And we are going to be doing an economy test today with this particular truck. Now, it's got the 5.3 liter Ecotec 3 V8, which means that we've also got active fuel management. So this thing will actually dump down from eight cylinders to four cylinders at cruising speed. And according to General Motors, it's actually got the best fuel economy for a V8 truck and very good opportunity for us to better what could be realized with a Ford EcoBoost V6. Well, you know, I'm kind of liking this idea, so let's see what happens here. Uh, it's nice to have that V8 power on tap when you need it. It's nice to have the uh, four-cylinder cruising economy when you need it as well without having to pull engines and switching things, so... That's true. Well, that's another project. Um, but the other thing that we want to find out is who's got the best touch? So there's a lot of things that you got to think about when you're actually using the throttle and the modulation and also just simply inputs. I mean, all of this can contribute. I mean, in fact, even your steering inputs can actually be something that can shave off fuel mileage if you're not careful. I'll bring it on. We'll put it to the test. Well, it sounds like we've got a challenge going on. So we're going to give this thing a bath because it's filthy. And uh, we're going to give you an idea as to what we're going to discover today on the road trip. And if you got thoughts, feelings, or questions about how you can save some fuel, you can send an email to steelbeltedmind at gmail.com. So uh, buckle up. Time for the road trip fuel test. Okay, folks, well, uh, Brian's going to get a little bit of B-roll here, and the one thing you're also going to notice, as I always do on the road trip, is I'm not going to address you because there's a whole road in front of me that I need to pay attention to. So let's give you an idea as to where we're at. Now, we did a reset, and we're currently going down a Trans-Canada Highway at 97 kilometers an hour. Now, we're 7.5 kilometers into that, and at the current setting, with the cruise control at 97 kilometers an hour, we are showing an average fuel economy of 10.8 liters per 100 kilometers. And we are currently, and have stayed in, V4 for about the last five clicks. I'd have to say that's pretty darn good, considering that we do have the 342 axle here with the Z71. Now, Brian, I gotta just ask if you can uh, carve your eye away from the viewfinder for a minute. Uh, do, do you think that we're gonna get any different things going on if we switch out a cruise, if we put it in manual, lock it into sixth gear, and you know, just we gotta try to fake this thing out a little bit. Uh, we could. I think it's uh, you know worth putting to the test today. Yeah, it is Sunday. Yeah, and. Uh, it's something I think everybody wants to know. Can you know? Is the truck smarter than us? Will or, it figure it out? Or are we smarter than the truck? We got to think about that because I think we're pretty smart. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing. I mean, in the conversation time that we've had here, like we're we're trying to give this to you in real time, folks. So right now we're sitting at 10.9 liters per 100 kilometers. So we seem to be able to get under 11 with this particular setup. Now you gotta remember too, that the numbers from the Interguide ratings, well, they're a little bit better. Why are they a little bit better? Well, gotta remember is that the best rating on this truck is gonna be a two wheel drive truck with the 308 axle. So that's definitely gonna contribute. But the other thing that's interesting too, Brian, is that the active fuel management, that actually occurs on the 4.3 liter Ecotec 3V6 too. So you can actually dump that thing down to four cylinders. It'd be interesting to see what that got as well. I think that would work better in a lighter truck. I think with the configuration that we have today, the uh, extra cubic inches are actually gonna be more of an advantage than a disadvantage, just for the fact that we have that uh, torque available to move the extra weight down the highway. Now, this particular truck isn't equipped with a tonneau cover, and all of the research that I found on that 
might get about one to two percent improvement if you got something like that to help with the arrow but this particular Silverado has a lot going on to sculpt things you got your wheel spats I mean it's all designed to be as aerodynamic as a blunt instrument can be I think uh, two-wheel drive a little bit lower if you cut the uh, air from going underneath it I think it's where you're gonna sit just, uh, notice the uh, most gains well, we're going to keep rolling along here down to Trans-Canada. So, as we mentioned, this particular run, cruise control set at 97 kilometers an hour. We're sitting at 10.9 liters per 100 kilometers. It's staying in V4 for the most part, but also kicking into V8 when required, depending on the crosswinds and stuff like that. Okay, well here's where we're at so far. Now, Brian Park has completed his run at 20 kilometers on Highway 3 here in Manitoba, and we actually ended up with a number of 10.8 liters per 100 kilometers. Now, the one thing that we also found while Brian was driving is that he was keeping it in V4 for the entire time just with the modulation of the throttle. Now, we're still trying to figure out how much of this is real and how much is gimmick because, remember, we got 10.9 liters per 100 kilometers with the cruise control on and going back and forth between V4 and V8. Okay, so here we are on the side of the highway. We're going to change drivers now. I got 10.8 liters to 100 kilometers. Uh, that's pretty good, I think. You know, I was doing the... Uh, Good pedal modulation there. I got a big foot, but I kept it out of it, and uh, we kept it in V4 mode the whole time. Now it's time to change drivers and let Michael have a try. Now, I've literally been on hundreds of rides with Mike, and well, he's not that smooth. There's no way he's going to get a number that low. I bet you the cruise control has a better chance of getting more economy than I do. Well, here's where we ended up. Now, we were hoping that we were gonna get some magical solution and eke out a little bit more economy by putting this particular Silverado into the manual mode and keeping it locked in in the sixth gear. Did we do much better? Actually, we were pretty much on par with what we were able to do with the manual control of the throttle and sitting at about 10.7 liters per 100K, 10.8. So to recap, 10.7 liters was the best that we were able to realize. 10.8, that was Brian's score. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a draw. And 10.9 liters per 100K, that's what we realized with the cruise control set to 97 kilometers per hour. It's interesting to note how many people were actually passing us at 97 kilometers per hour. And just thinking about all that fuel that was running out of their tailpipe so quickly. So it really comes down to the speeds that you're going to be observing on a regular basis to achieve economy on any particular vehicle. But remembering too, that this particular Silverado, it's one of the larger configurations that you can get with a crew cab and a six and a half foot box. We do have the Z7 1 plus a 3.42 rear axle ratio. So Quite honestly, anywhere in the tens is a good number to be at for a full-size truck. Now, the other thing is, too, is we're not using anything under the hood here with the 5.3 liter Ecotec 3 that could flare out at some point in the vehicle's life. EcoBoost, I'm looking in your direction. So that's our thoughts and feelings on the Chevrolet Silverado 2014 style and what you can effectively achieve with the Ecotec 3 mil. Now if you've got thoughts, feelings, or questions about anything Silverado, send an email to steelbeltedmind at gmail.com. For The Road Trip, I'm Michael Clark. Keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down.